Arc Formulas, Part 2. We're going to be looking at inscribed quadrilaterals. So those are going to be quadrilaterals that are drawn inside a circle. The opposite angles are going to be supplementary. So here we have quadrilateral ABCD, which is inscribed in circle D. We're going to find angles A, B, C, and D. So the first angle that we're going to look at is going to be angle D. Notice that angle D is inscribed angle, which means we know that it is going to be half of the distance of the arc that it intercepts. So arc ABC is 100 degrees. Half of 100 degrees is going to be 50. So we have angle D is going to be half of 39 plus 61, half of 100 and that's going to give us 50 degrees. So we know that this angle is 50 degrees. Now we know that angle B is opposite of angle D in the quadrilateral. That makes those two angles supplementary. So the measure of angle B is going to be 180 minus 50, which is going to give us 130 degrees. Now we're going to need to find the measure of angle A. So again, we're going to go over to angle A, and we're going to look at the arcs that it intercepts. This should be 147. Okay. So we're going to take a look at angle A starts here. So it it intercepts arc BC and DC. So the measure of angle A is going to be one half of 61 plus 147. So again, I'm looking at this full arc here is the intercepted angle, intercepted arc for angle a. So that's going to give me half of 208, which is going to give me 104. And I know that angle C is opposite angle A in the quadrilateral. So the measure of angle C is going to equal 180 minus 108, so it's going to equal 76 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at number six. So I know that these two angles are opposite each other in the quadrilateral that's inscribed in the circle. So I know that 62 Actually, let's start with the larger angle. So 133 plus 62 minus 5x is going to equal 180. They are supplementary. So 195 minus 5x is going to equal 180. Zero pair out the 195, 195. So negative 5x is equal to negative 15. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, x is going to equal 3. All right, now we have intersecting chords and secants inside the circle. When we have the angles being formed inside the circle, this is the formula that we're going to use. If we're trying to find the measure of angle 1 and it is created by chords or secants and it's inside the circle, I'm going to take the measure of arc AD, 
arc AD plus the measure of arc BC. Notice those are the two intercepted arcs of angle 1. I'm going to add them together and then I'm going to divide by 2. If I'm looking for the measure of angle 2, I'm going to look at its intercepted arcs. So that would be AB and DC or CD. So again, I'm looking at the intercepted arcs. I'm going to add my little red over here, so the two intercepted arcs. I'm going to add them together and I'm going to divide by 2. So if I'm looking at the measure of angle STR, the first thing I'm going to do is highlight my intercepted arcs. So my intercepted arc would be SR and PQ. So for angle, or sorry, for arc PQ, the measurement given is 186 degrees, and the arc SR, the measurement given is 112 degrees. So if I'm going to find the measure of the angle, so the measure of angle STR is going to equal 1 half, and then I'm going to sum those two intercepted arcs. So it's going to be 1 half of 298, which is going to be 149 degrees. Now I can also have an angle that's created by intersecting lines that are on the circle. So you're going to notice here that my vertex of the two angles is on the tangent of the circle. So the angles are actually sitting on the circle, they're not inside the circle. When we have that situation, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at taking half of the intercepted arc. So if I'm looking at angle 1, angle 1 here is going to be half of the intercepted arc, which is arc AB. If I'm trying to find angle 2, then I'm going to look at the intercepted arc, which is going to be BAC, or the major part of the arc. It could also be ACB, and I'm going to take half of it. All right, so here you see I have an angle that is on the circle, so I'm going to look at the intercepted arcs. So the first thing that I'm going to notice is that I have the actual angle of 151. So being given that, then I know that the measure of arc WZY, so WZY is going to be double the angle that they've given me. So I'm going to double 2 times 151 because that's my angle. So that arc is going to be 302 degrees, 302 degrees, okay? If that arc is 302 degrees, then the measure of arc XZY, so X, X, Z, Y sorry this should be X, Z, Y is 302. We already found that. Let me make this X. So then we are looking for actually the measure of just xy because that's the only other arc that's left. So the measure of the arc of xy would be 360 minus 302 which is going to give us 58 degrees. 
All right, now we have some exterior angles that are formed when we have secants or tangents that are used to create those arcs. So now this is different because you'll notice that the angle is outside of the circle, not sitting on the circle, not sitting inside the circle. So it's outside the circle. So again, what we're going to be looking for is the measure of arc CE. So it's the exterior arc minus the interior arc. So the one that's farthest away from the angle minus the one closest to the angle. We could also have an exterior angle created by a tangent and a secant. And in that case, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the arc, intercepted arc, furthest away from the angle and subtract the intercepted arc closest to the angle. And finally, the last situation we can have is if we have two tangents, but again, we're going to use the same type of formula. We're going to use the intercepted angle or intercepted arc furthest away from the angle and subtract it from the intercepted arc closest to the angle. And then on all of them, we're going to divide it by two. So here we have the measure of angle PQR is going to equal one half, and we're going to take the furthest away arc, which is 313 minus 47, and that is going to give us one half of 266, which is going to give us 133 degrees. So that angle here is going to be 133 degrees. All right. So again, we are trying to find the measure of arc SW. So I've marked it with an X here. But we know that the measure of TUV is going to equal one half of the measure of arc SW minus arc TV. So let's go ahead and fill in what we know. So the angle is already 40 degrees, and that is going to be 1 half of X minus a 75. Again, we're doing the furthest arc away from the angle minus the closest arc to the angle. And then we're going to go ahead and do uh, 1 half x minus 75 is equal to 40 degrees, symmetrical. Multiply times 2, so I have x minus 75 is equal to 80, plus 75, and that's going to give me an arc measurement of 155. So that's how long arc SW is. Oops, let's get our degree sign in there. Last one, now we have a secant and a tangent. So again, um, we're going to figure out, first of all, we need to figure out the measure of arc FH. All right, so we know that the measure of angle EFH is going to equal one half of the measure of arc EH minus arc, uh, let's see if we have, uh, let me fix the labeling here, It'll make it a little bit easier. We're going to make the intersecting point of F, and we're going to make this, G. So let's make that E G F. There we go. E G H, sorry. E G H is going to be E is half of arc E H minus F H. Okay, so let's plug in what we know. 77 is equal to one half. Uh, 191 is the arc furthest away from 
the angle minus, and we don't know the arc closest to the angle. So we're going to have 77 is equal to, let's go ahead and do symmetrical on that. So we're going to do 1 half 191 minus x is equal to 77 times 2 both sides. So 191 minus x is going to equal 154. We're going to zero pair out the 191. And that's going to give us negative x is equal to negative 37, so x is equal to 37. So if I now know that this is 37 degrees, then what I can do, let me write that up there, is 37 degrees. So arc EF, this arc here, is going to simply be 360 minus 191 plus 37, 360 minus 228, and that's going to give us 132 for our arc. And that's how we do 